Hi, I'm Fred Knowles. I'm actually uh, was born in this area, Dawson Creek. Uh, we became affiliated with the Chetwin area, well, in the early 50s. Uh, my mom was originally from Lone Prairie. She lived there in, uh, well, the early 30s, actually even before 1930, and uh, we spent a lot of time going up there. Her family were, were one of the pioneers in Lone Prairie. They actually helped build the first school there. And I think basically the only reason they moved to East Pine was to start another school there, which was unfortunate because, you know, they did get the school started, but yeah. What happened at East Pine was a big ice jam built up on the Murray River, and I guess it'd be right where uh, they've got the big gravel pit now. Uh, the water come over there, they, they, they were on the pine side, but uh, the water took the, I guess, a path of least resistance and come right over their house, and there was 12 of them in the house, and uh, let's see, uh, eight, eight of them were drowned, her mom and her dad, three of her sisters, and three of her cousins, uh, infant cousins that were staying, or nephews, I'm sorry, that were staying there. Love the area. We spent a lot of time out at Moberly Lake. Uh, fishing was terrific then, and you know, almost an all-day job to get out there from Dawson Creek. Uh, in the '60s, we bought uh, a burger bar out here from Gene and Jeep Groves. Ran that till the mid '70s, and we purchased more property on Main Street, and just continued on. Dad was born in uh, Regina, Saskatchewan. He came to the Rolla area in 1929. Uh, Rolla was a big concern then. They actually had three hotels. I don't know if people know that or not. Then he ended up in the Bonanza area. Uh, he stayed there till just before the war. Um, he actually worked on the Monkman Pass, a uh, big highway they were gonna put through there. I guess he made like a dollar a day. He said he got a dollar a day and all the pop they could drink, so big wage. <laughs> My dad actually joined the Army uh, in 1941. Uh, he enlisted in Edmonton, did some basic training in Edmonton. Then he shipped to uh, Waterloo and uh, went overseas in 1942. It was quite a story actually. Him and mom were married in Edmonton and uh, she had to follow him down to, uh, I believe it was Waterloo. But they couldn't ride on the same train so he had to leave messages for her at every stop. So it's quite the story. You know, it, it's, it's funny. I really probably didn't know much about him even being overseas till until I was almost in my, my teens, eh? It was just something they didn't talk about, but uh, the only time I heard stories was when he got together with their buddies over, <laughs> you know, a few drinks, and, uh, you know, his overseas buddies and that. And then, you know, he could kind of hide out and listen to the stories, and, but for him to, he didn't come out and tell, tell me any stories at all. In his later years, he, he opened up a little bit and told me one story about capturing a, a Hitler youth and an older, uh, an older German soldier. Uh, he still got the knife from that, so I got it now. And he, he said what happened was the Hitler youth didn't want to surrender and he ended up spitting in the older guy's face. And so that just shows you how indoctrinated they were into the cause. Eh? Of the Warrens, I mean, I, I have another affiliation with, with World War II because both my uncles were overseas. 
Uh, one was wounded in Italy, Alan, and the other one, Bert, who became actually quite a character in this area. <laughs> but his actual name was Wilbert Wallace Wellington Manley Warren. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, he had what they call now a, a post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, because he was at Dieppe, eh? A lot of people didn't know that, which was was uh, Canada's first disaster over there, man. We're sitting in the Legion right now, and I, I was looking at the, at the charter members and that, and just a whole different group of people. Uh, just, just the effort they put in, you know, with very, very little resources to come together and, and build it. And I mean, it's continued on. Uh, it's a different type of people working now. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't think we'll ever see that that class of people again. I mean, most of the guys that, I think all the guys that built it were uh, Depression era. Most of them had been working since they were, you know, 13, 14 years old. I know my dad was and yeah, they just believed in hard work. When I first started coming, well, to the Chetwin Legion and to the Remembrance Days, I mean, there was row and row of veterans, eh? And uh, this year, <laughs> I don't know. I guess we hopefully we'll see Albert Flett. But last year, yeah, last year was a real eye-opener because I believe Albert Flett was the only overseas veteran in the, in the, the building. So. What, what does Remembrance Day mean uh, for you, Fred? Oh, golly. You know, I, I guess it's just a time where everyone just sits down together. You know, it doesn't matter what's going on during the year or, you know, say with clubs like this, what kind of conflict they had. And everybody just comes together and it's just peaceful, eh? I mean, we're, we're celebrating the end of a war and that, but it's just a peaceful time just see everybody working together. Hopefully we can live up to their standards and carry on the tradition of the Legion. I mean, all Legions are suffering right now. You know, we just have to go to 100 kilometers down the road to the Dawson Creek Legion and, uh, you know, they, they don't even have a premise anymore. So, yeah, uh, bas basically just hopefully we can keep it going.